Find a penny, pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. Well, we're about to make our pennies extra lucky today by alloying them with another metal to make it look like they're silver and gold. We'll be relying on what we would call a chemical change to make these effects. As you probably already know, all matter is made up of these little teensy tiny pieces that are so small you can't even see them without the help of a microscope called atoms. Atoms, when they get together, form these things that we call molecules. Molecules are atoms that are bonded together or holding on to each other. When it comes to molecules, one of the two ways that you can change them is with something called a physical change, where you don't change what the molecules are themselves, but you do change their appearance. An example would be with this ice cube here melting. It's still water, even as it goes from its solid state into a liquid phase, and if we heat it up into a gas phase. So we didn't change what it was made out of, we just changed the state of matter that it's in, and therefore the appearance of the molecules. A chemical change, or the second way that we can change molecules, is a little bit of a different story. Now here, we actually break apart the previous molecular configurations, and we form brand new arrangements that weren't there when we started. With a chemical change, you're making brand new stuff. Unlike a physical change, with a chemical change, you can't go back to the things you started with after you've had the change already happen. Our experiment of turning pennies to gold and silver will be a chemical change. An example of a chemical change is this log burning. So we started with wood, we're using fire to do the change, and it's creating smoke and ash, and we cannot take that smoke and ash, put it back together again, and end up with wood. Sometimes chemical changes can be very, very exciting, very violent. Safety is always really important when you're pulling off these kind of stunts. In this experiment, sulfuric acid is being combined with regular table sugar. Let's watch as the chemical reaction happens. The molecules from the acid are reacting with the molecules from the sugar. It's causing a pretty pronounced change to happen. That's why you're seeing that giant tower start to come out of the beaker. The tower is actually something brand new. It's being changed into carbon. And the gas that you're seeing come off is a brand new gas that was not there when we started called sulfur dioxide. Now we're ready for our chemical change, our penny experiment. Now with so many of these chemical experiments, it's really cool to show you how they work, the science behind them, but safety is really important. Don't attempt this if you're a kid or if you're an adult, but you don't have the proper training or safety equipment to do this safely. For this experiment, I needed some pennies. The shinier, the better. I prepared enough chemicals to do a batch of 40 at one time. Dimes, nickels, quarters, they won't work unfortunately. We need pennies because pennies are coated in copper. The next thing I needed was 30 grams of pure zinc. Not zinc oxide, pure zinc the metal. Either powdered zinc or zinc granules will work for this experiment. Powdered zinc tends to work a little faster, but granules are fine too. The next ingredient is something that does the heavy lifting here, sodium hydroxide. It's a pretty strong chemical, so care must be taken when using it. I needed about five grams. My gloves and goggles are on anytime I handle sodium hydroxide. And last but not least, good old H2O, water. I poured 100 milliliters of water into my beaker. Now I was ready to start the experiment. The first step was to add the sodium hydroxide to the water, stir it to dissolve it. Next, I added my zinc. Next, I moved my beaker to my hot plate and set it to low heat. Now the fun begins. In this chemical change, what's happening is little bits of that zinc metal we put in are gonna start to go into the solution of the sodium hydroxide and water that we mixed up. Those little bits of zinc are going to be attracted to the copper of the pennies and they're gonna start to deposit or be attracted to that copper and create a covering over the copper penny called a zinc plating. 
This change took place over the course of about an hour, give or take. As you can see from these pictures, the pennies start to look more and more silvery as time goes on. Now one important thing to make note of here, the coating is not actually silver. It's zinc, but it looks very silvery. My silver colored pennies are zinc plated pennies. With just one more fiery step, we can turn these silver pennies into gold pennies. And by gold pennies, I mean yellow brass, which looks like gold. Yellow brass is what we would call an alloy, or a blend of metals that come together at the atomic level, meaning there's a chemical change happening here to create this color change. Atoms are rearranging and we're making something new. The heat from the flame actually breaks the chemical bonds between the zinc and the copper atoms and causes them to switch root, switch places. This, in turn, leads to a change in color. You start to see a new thing called brass forming on the penny. After the brass is formed, the pennies are cooled down and you can see that really brilliant golden color that we now have with our yellow brass penny. So we started with a copper penny. We changed it by plating it to a zinc penny. Last, we heated it and got yellow brass. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.